Erde ist eine Scheide. Hey Rabbits, it's Trixie and in today's video we're gonna talk about some tricky German words again. More precisely, word pairs that sound very similar but should not be confused. As many of you may know, my boyfriend Eric comes from Venezuela. And yeah, you have to say it that way. Venezuela. He lives in Germany for six years now, but yeah, learning German has been a bumpy road. Don't get me wrong, his German is quite good already, but he still makes mistakes and sometimes, no offense, this can be a little bit funny. Especially when he confuses one word with another and ends up accidentally talking about ham rather than the package he wants to send. So to help other German learners like him, here are some German words that sound very similar but mean totally different things. Better know which word is which to avoid misunderstandings and embarrassing situations. So after the example with the ham and the package, you may wonder, what does meat have to do with mailing something? Well, here's the story. Eric wanted to send a package to his niece for her birthday and one morning he told me, ich habe das Paket schinken vergessen. The Germans among you may guess correctly that I was more than puzzled about what he meant. I mean, what he said literally translates to, I forgot the package of ham. And I was wondering, is he trying to make a dirty joke talking about his meat package? Or is he referring to our last trip to the supermarket? Did he mean to bring ham with him to have a snack? But who keeps ham in packages? Did he order ham from Venezuela? Venezuela. All this didn't make much sense. And then it struck me, like lightning, like lightning, like light, light, lightning, ching chang ding dong. Dann hatte ich einen Geistesblitz. He didn't mean to say schinken. What he intended to say was schicken. He forgot to send the package to his niece. The wrong word plus some grammatical issues completely changed the meaning of that sentence. The correct statement would have been, ich habe vergessen, das Paket zu verschicken. But the complicated sentence structure with vergessen zu simply overwhelmed him. Of course, I explained all of this to him and we still have a good chuckle about this misunderstanding every now and then. Schicken to send something, der Schinken, ham. In the grocery store you can find ham in big chunks or in slices. Leading me to the next term, the German word for slice, which is die Scheibe. Hallo, zehn Scheiben Schinken bitte. Ten slices of ham please. Die Scheibe can also be a window pane. Die Finsterscheibe. Finsterscheibe? Ja, wenn es dunkel ist, ne? Das ist eine Finsterscheibe. Die Scheibe can also be a window pane. Die Fensterscheibe. Or in general, a flat object. Flat earthers would say, Die Erde ist eine Scheibe. In German, but maybe I shouldn't even teach them that. Now, some of you may have seen it coming. A word that you shouldn't confuse die Scheibe with is die Scheide. A very common term for a woman's private part and also the sheath for a knife or a sword. But not gonna lie, the first one is the more popular meaning by far. For obvious reasons, using die Scheide instead of die Scheibe is something you may want to avoid. In other words, saying die Fensterscheide or Schinkenscheide definitely makes one's imagination run wild. And same if not worse applies to claiming die Erde ist eine Scheide. Scheide. <laughs> Feminism level over 9,000, or I don't know what else to comment on that. Anyway, we agree, Scheibe, Scheide, know the difference. Since we're already talking lower body parts, the butt is next. Another two words that Eric tends to mix up are hinten and hintern. But let me tell you, they are quite different. While hinten means in the back or at the end, der hintern is, well, surprise, the butt. So if you say hintern anstellen instead of hinten anstellen to join the end of a queue, that literally means that butts have to wait in line. No, not people with butts, butts only. Just imagine that. A bunch of butts. butts. <laughs> I cannot say serious with this. A bunch of butts lining up in front of an ATM on a busy Monday morning. One last body part related word pair. I'm gonna refrain from making a kinky transition here and jump right to it. Die Zange and die Zunge are two very different things. The words are identical except for the U and the A. So I can only imagine how easily a non-German could mix them up. But be cautious. While die Zange is the German word for pliers, you know, the tool, die Zunge is the tongue. Hallo, Herr Nackbar. Kann ich mir vielleicht Ihre Zunge ausleihen? Oh, oh eine Kalaschätzelein. Zu mir oder zu dir? See? 
quite dangerous. Also, granted that the creepy next door neighbor is not involved, I'd prefer a Zungenkuss over a Zangenkuss. I don't know about you, but whenever I feel crafty, I usually end up injuring myself. I'm just too clumsy to work with heavy tools. Before I can finish whatever product I'm working on, I usually hit myself, scratch myself, or cut myself by accident. All my DIY attempts are like a Saw movie. Oh yes, there will be blood. And what happens when we are bleeding? Yep, we clean the injury, put a band-aid on, and soon enough the wound is gonna scab over. Why are we talking about this? Because the next word I want to tell you about is the scab. In German, der Schorf. Schorf. So many nice German words with a rrrr today. Take that, Till Lindemann. Coming for you. Schorf sounds dangerously similar to scharf, which means sharp, spicy, or sexy. Various meanings, but nothing you'd connect to a healing wound, really. So unless you are trying to go for a more than awkward pun. Oh, Perle, du bist so scharf. And hier möchte ich knabbern. Know the difference between scharf and scharf and be careful when you craft something. Getting hurt is like one of the worst things that can happen to your body. Ouch. Wanna hear a good thing? Being snuggled and cuddled. Especially after a bad day full of DIY accidents, being comforted with cuddles is like the best thing ever. A warm hug, a nice massage, somebody lovingly caressing your skin. To pet somebody, or for example an animal, is streichen in German. Not to be confused with streichen. Streichen means to paint something. Not really in an artistic sense, more like a wall. Ich streiche die Wand. Ich streiche die Pflanze. Ah, is that paint on your nose? It can also mean to delete or cross out something. So what do we have here? Kanäle zum Abonnieren. Wait a second. Das musste ich sofort durchstreichen. Much better. The only way streichen can refer to a stroking movement is when you add a preposition. Ich streiche mit meiner Hand über deine Haut. Creep comments incoming. Oh, Tracy, du kannst dich jederzeit über meine Haut streichen. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how I picture you when you write something like that. Die Katze streicht mir um die Beine. Der Wind streicht über das Feld. So the fact that streicheln and streichen are not the same, yet can both describe a way of stroking, made me figure they belong in this video. All right, rabbits, I herp, herp, I herp your lord something there. I really hope that you learned something new with this video and that you enjoyed my presentation. Did you know all of these tricky German words already? And can you maybe think of more? If you liked this episode, please leave a thumbs up because that would make me really, really happy. Subscribe to Don't Trust the Rabbit for more videos like this one. And if you want to support my channel, even a bit more, you can also find me on Patreon. Now I wish you all a wonderful day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!